What is up, people? Have I got an absolute treat for you today? You already know. You've read the title. Now, I woke up this morning, and when I check my phone, the first thing I see is this thumbnail. And I'm like, oh, holy shit! I have to watch this video. And the video I'm talking about is this one. Get Set Fly Science have released a new video where uh, this is a podcast of him with Abhijit Chavda. and i've spoken about both these people before now uh, this is a 2 hour podcast my god how am i going to react to a 2 hour podcast we'll talk about the podcast but let's talk about these two people in case you're not aware of them so abhi chavda is a physicist who talks mostly about history and uh, get set fly science is a, a channel that talks about science the science communication but in a really biased lens that's what my last main channel video was about now i've spoken about both these people in my main channel abhi chavda does a lot of pseudo history and gaurav who runs get set fly science uh, has a strong hindu bias and so most of his content where he talks about science but a, li- a little bit of religion and maybe some irrational thought seems a bit biased but if it's pure science a bit of pure physics or whatever i've not seen him talking in a pseudo scientific manner like i've seen a lot of other creators neither have i seen abhi chavda doing that abhi chavda i've never seen any piece of pseudo science from him so these are two genuine scientific people but abhi chavda has given out a lot of pseudo history and gaurav like i said is strongly biased in favor of religion so when i see a video like this i mean why they even taking a topic like this seriously like mysteries of the universe and god what is happening but um, let's watch the podcast now i'm not going to show you the entire podcast but uh, whatever relevant sections are there that i can comment on uh, that i want to comment on i will put that in the video but uh, the rest of it go watch their podcast it's on get set fly science so i finished watching the entire podcast and there is nothing uh, that is problematic which i'm not surprised by because these two are sensible people and i've always said that also in even in my videos about them the problem that i find with them or my criticism of both of them is that they take advantage of uh, the kind of beliefs that their majority audience has and without really critically talking about them critically thinking about any of those beliefs they cater to that bias that their audience has and they talk about things that the audience will enjoy uh, and here in this video i mean they've no, never really they talk about critical thinking a lot they talk about uh, empirical thinking a lot but they don't uh, really critically analyze beliefs that whoever's the majority of the audience that's going to watch this podcast now i'll show you the podcast so i've watched the entire thing and um wait i need to move my camera a bit yeah so i think the topics of atheism come over here is atheism linked to depression or atheism evil Now despite the clickbaity nature of the names there are actually very very sensible answers that they have given uh, they talk about correlations uh, how there might be other reasons uh, other than just atheism leading to these factors uh, and they talk about all that and they even talk about how uh, you can have these values or whatever uh, despite being an atheist you just have to you can believe in whatever philosophy you want and uh, they say all that the only part that i feel i need to comment on is this over here i think we should just watch this section uh section's called uh, difference between science and philosophy i'll just uh, watch it and comment on that rest of the podcast i didn't find anything problematic let me know what you feel uh, but other than that i have nothing more to say After inflation, we have yes. a CMBR, cosmic microwave background radiation. Hmm. We know the characteristics of the radiation. That tells us the conditions in the, in the very early universe right. after the Big Bang. Hmm. उसके पहले का डेटा हमारे पास है ही नहीं. Yep. So without data, we can only speculate. Speculate. And if we 
वी कैन डेफिनेटली कंस्ट्रक्ट मैथमेटिकल थियरीज कि क्या हुआ हो क्या हो सकता हो है हो सकता है इतनी एनर्जी निकली कहां से निकली यस बट इफ यू कैन नॉट फॉल्सिफाई अ थियरी इट्स नॉट थियरी इट्स इट्स नॉट साइंस इट्स फिलॉसफी दिस इज बेसिक फिलॉसफी ऑफ साइंस आई कंप्लीटली एग्री विद व्हाट ही सेड बट दिस इज नॉट समथिंग दीस पीपल सीम टू अप्लाई द नेचर ऑफ साइंटिफिक थियरी इन द नेचर ऑफ टेस्टेबिलिटी एंड फॉल्सिफाइबिलिटी दिस इज नॉट समथिंग दे सीम टू अप्लाई टू अदर आइडियाज दैट दे टॉक अबाउट व्हिच if they apply it then their audience won't like it and that's kind of what i say but uh, abhi seems to take the position that uh, don't apply scientific thinking to anything religious but the problem is there are empirical questions that people answer in a using religion too that is where scientific thinking sci- the scientific method has to be applied and uh, i think a lot of bases for that thinking will just be blown wide open these guys don't do it right yes absolutely if if you cannot falsify a theory yes. i can i can give you a theory okay uh. between the orbit of uranus and neptune there is uh. a hawking pressure cooker going around the sun hmm ye theory definitely a scientific theory hai hmm. i mean it's not a scientific theory it's a, it's unfalsifiable by the way he's talking about the same thing that uh, as the russell's teapot if the audience is firmly with it it is definitely a good theory okay but hmm. can you falsify it Hmm. You can't prove it wrong. Yeah. You cannot or, prove or it some, right, but you can't even prove it wrong. Or something. Like- yeah, uh, not being falsifiable makes it not a scientific theory. Like unicorn exists in this universe. That's not yeah. false. Yeah. So okay, we don't have evidence. Yes. The absence of evidence is not the evidence of absence, yeah. but we cannot falsify. Just think of unfalsifiable as untestable because I think unfalsifiable as a concept becomes harder to understand or harder to teach but untestable the word itself will tell you what it means it's untestable falsified also. as well so a theory which cannot be falsified is not a scientific theory hmm. yes. even though it may be mathematically rigorous yes so th- th- that's why we have lots of theories like string theory and all yeah. and uh, various classes of theories Quantum which cannot be gravity. falsified hmm. if it oh that's a problem string theory is theoretically falsifiable the only problem is the conditions required to test it require so much energy that uh, it has never been tested it's extremely difficult to test it but theoretically it is testable it is falsifiable so that's what makes it a scientific theory but um, yeah it can't be falsified it's not scientific so the so the point is that the question of what came before the beginning before ha. the big bang ha. you can only speculate about it in the But absence answer of, through philosophy you can answer through philosophy so, uh, you spoke about dharma ki dharma ki baat aati hai ki agar aapke paas iska koi uttar nahi to aap dharma ke paas jaoge ha dekhiye kya hota hai na ki you cannot mix science and religion hmm ye cheeze mix hoti hi nahi hai let me explain why hmm any good religion has a philosophical background yeah a rigorous philosophical background yeah. kuch religions are only about faith kuch religions are about inquiry and about philosophy yeah philosophy has logic ha huh. philosophy has a very uh, strong logical underpinning right but in philosophy see philosophical theories are also theories theories just like scientific theories yeah. there is logic in philosophical theories yeah. but in science the theories are grounded in data in empirical and observational evidence and the phenomena are all what i want to say here is the problem with philosophical theories is, is you can't call them equally valid now of course i'm sure uh, uh, he'll debate me over here but the problem is i can make up anything philosophical like um, i'm making a theory that the uh, world has invisible dragons in it they're invisible intangible they breathe heatless fire all that shit so there's no way to detect them now i can say this is a philosophical theory but is it as valid in your eyes as say philosophical ideas from your religion it wouldn't be i mean saying something is valid because it's a philosophical theory is problematic all physical phenomena yeah in philosophy you could have things like non physical objects non physical phenomena metaphysics metaphysics yeah. and and uh, and and uh, yeah that sort of thing and still uh, prove something yeah yeah so e- no you can't prove something what are you trying to prove with that uh, yeah that sort of thing and still uh, prove something prove yeah. what yeah so e- imagine that something like the something non physical like the soul exists mm. now using that you can create a whole logical theory yeah which with with proper th- properties of the soul huh. and then it's a whole philosophical theory but it's n- 
how how just tell me how, how where do you get these properties of the soul now the problem is when you talk about the properties of something it immediately falls within the realm of empirical theory otherwise these properties are all assumptions aren't they if you want to purely leave it in the realm of philosophy aren't all of them assumptions how does that make it any more valid than my invisible dragon idea not a scientific theory because it's a non physical Nobody object has proved the existence of soul because it's a non physical object yes a soul is by definition a non physical object uska koi weight nahi hai mass nahi hai right. size nahi hai right so you cannot mix something that is non physical with something that is physical hmm. so any theory any any system which has non physical objects and concepts like uh, concepts like uh, for example uh, ethics morality all those things ah. these things they come into the class of philosophical Philosoph- and religious theories not scientific theories mm. yeah the problem with i agree ethics morality all these they come under a philosophy but the problem is if you use a philosophy that is grounded in non evidence based empirical claims there's a problem that's problematic that leads to all the problems that i talked about and i do talk about in a lot of my videos how about something more secular how about something like secular humanism that is a great way of grounding your ethics and morality without grounding it in something that is empirically untestable and falsifiable and based on assumptions that are yeah untestable and falsifiable so when somebody starts saying ke bhai ab hum science explain nahi kar sakta is cheez ko hmm. ab bhagwan ki baat karte that is i respect that but that is not science hmm. it doesn't mean it is good or bad or wrong or right hmm. Mm. It is completely wrong for a scientist to make fun of philosophical theories and religious theories and vice versa. And vice versa. Yeah. It is Yeah, uh one thing uh like he says it's not wrong or right, but that makes it sound like it's valid. See, I will say that it's problematic. I think I've spoken about enough reasons why it's problematic, but briefly um uh, it doesn't come in isolation. It comes as a package with a lot of other assumptions. some of which are empirical but untestable uh, and these assumptions form the basis for why people you know enact violence in the name of religion it's completely wrong for a religious person to make fun of science because you don't understand science hmm. and similarly most yeah i think criticism should not make fun uh, and this is a realization i only made uh, or this is something that hit me only later on in my youtube journey so if you find some of my older youtube videos you will find me making fun um but i refrain from making fun even if i disagree with someone i think it's important that you don't make fun the reason is if you want to try and convince someone of what you're saying or if you want someone to take you seriously and consider your arguments then it's important they don't feel attacked because when they feel attacked their primary objective is becomes to defend and not to think about the points you're saying scientists don't understand religion or philosophy mm-hmm. these dono cheeze are like oil and water they don't mix right. some people may be able to straddle both the domains mm. but even in their minds they are very clear ki ye alag hai ye alag hai yes. there are lots of scientists who are religious yes for example uh, what's his name lemaitre he's one of the um, one of the pioneers in cosmology he was a catholic uh, priest uh, he believed in, in galileo was also uh, like he believed in religion right uh, in those days back then people had questions which could or from what they understood they could only be answered using religious uh, you know answers but i wouldn't consider anyone that came before uh, a darwin a uh, genuine you know religious or scientist scientific person but yeah because the work was since like the design hypothesis and the only way you could people could answer it was with god I initially suppose, yeah. maybe he must have believed in religion too mm. i'm not i'm not very familiar with his life history okay. uh, the religious history but george lemaitre was definitely a catholic priest okay okay mm. but he came up with uh, with very significant uh, uh, i've con- spoken about this attribution to the big bang theory mm. uh, you know physical cosmology <clears throat> which are completely against his religion yeah. religious beliefs so it's possible to have this for example ramanujan one of the greatest mathematicians yeah, in the past yeah, the ramanujan also i have a video on him i link both of them down below so he is hmm. he was a deeply religious person right. every equation came from his goddess in yes, his, goddess. his dreams hmm. so you can reconcile these two things in your mind hmm. but at the end of the day these are separate things yes absolutely
So that in my opinion, like uh, religion or the phil- the religious philosophy adds meaning to your life hmm. because universe as a whole it doesn't have any meaning. Like universe can an- like science can answer the how, but not the why, right? Why like why, and which probably brings us to the original causality thing. कि शायद और ये ये मतलब मेरा एक एजम्पन है दिस इज अ फिलोसॉफिकल डायरेक्शन वेर वी आर गोइंग इन राइट नाउ कि शायद अगर एंड देर आर सम साइंटिफिक बेसिस लाइक वो डेटा ऑब्वियसली अगर हम सिर्फ अपने यूनिवर्स के कॉन्टेक्स में समझे तो काफी माइक्रोस्कोपिक हो जाएगा बिकॉज बहुत सारी थियरीज बोलती है कि यूनिवर्स के बाहर भी बहुत सारे यूनिवर्सेज हो सकते हैं Hindu right. observes this, and it's it's not a scientific theory. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. It, There are different science. different concepts and different philosophies. Yeah. So, अब यहाँ पर अगर हम वो quantum field theory का assumption लेते हैं और हम assume करते हैं कि इस universe में जो भी चीज because there are so much quantum quantum fluctuations everywhere. Yeah. There are vibrations. There are harmonics everywhere. तो obviously यहाँ पे multiple चीजें create हो रही हैं. So we can classify these creations into two two things. One is the one is the topic which I'm not going to talk about. But yeah, basically that was the only section that I felt I should comment on. Everything else uh, seemed not problematic. I think it's a pretty decent podcast. Yeah, check it out if you have time. But uh, that's my reaction to it and my comments on it. Cool. Hope you enjoyed. See you in the next video.